What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. About half the year is done. I'm going to be taking you outside and showing you all the updates around the homestead slash community that I am creating. If you've seen my videos, you may have caught most of this, but I haven't given a detailed tour of what the community looks like since last year. That's what we're going to be doing today. Don't think I'm going to be bringing out my golf cart. Why not walk? But it is a hot one. It's about 86 degrees right now. I'm going to be starting at the front of my property. You guys remember I planted these about two years ago. They are growing nicely. I planted these first three about two years ago and then I planted these 10 Thuja Green Giants last year. Unfortunately this one is dying. I did contact the company and they told me to wait a month to see if this winter bronzing ever goes away like it did with most of these. But it's not growing. It's not turning green again. There is some green that's growing down here. So I'm wondering if this thing will come back to life. I don't think it will, so I think they'll probably send me a new one. I did plant these papa trees last year also, and one of them is growing, but one of them is not. So I don't know what's going on with that. This one is not growing, this one is. Recently, my friends just dropped off two loads of wood chips so that I could fill in the pathways around the gardens, the produce gardens, even put some around the trees. This was the first load that was dropped, and then we put the second load over there. Speaking of these paths, if you could see all of these weeds in there, last year I did a video on killing the weeds with a bunch of salt, but as you can see, there are weeds growing. It didn't work, so I don't really know what I'm going to do about these paths. I don't know if I should drop another load and make it two or three inches higher than it is. I don't want to use Roundup type pesticides or anything on there, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Obviously salt isn't going to work. I don't want to buy a bunch of vinegar. I have to weed eat this whole path, so that's been difficult. Let's Let's go look at the fruit trees I just planted. So I just planted six fruit trees. This is a peach tree. She's actually growing nicely. I don't know if I'm supposed to cut those off. I don't know if those are runners or if they're just part of the tree. Maybe I do cut them off. I planted the other ones over here in this open section just because there was a lot more room. I did use some of the wood chips to put around here as like a mulch. This is a red apple tree. This is a yellow apple tree. This is a plum tree. They're all flowering, so that's really nice. These are two pear trees. However, this one is excellent, growing excellent. I mean, it's got tons of leaves on it. And this one has none. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know if it's dead. I don't know what to do. So yeah, these are the paths. You can barely see them. I have to come in here and weed eat. Then here's more of the tarp that's showing. Now we're gonna come down here by the wildflower gardens. Nothing new with these. However, in the spring when these started coming up, there was a lot of different colors. Last year there was only yellow and orange, but this year I started seeing pinks, purples, blues, white, reds. This section right here I'm going to be doing something with not anytime soon. I don't have the money to do it, but there is a creek that runs around here and my two neighbors, their water flows into my land. So this whole part floods right here. So I'm going to fix this area eventually, just not right now. I have my little bench that's there for onlookers. As you guys know, this whole section is going to be my rentals. None of that's going up right now. I did plant wildflowers around all of these trees. Here's another part where this tarp is just not working out and it's because this whole thing is on a slant so all of the water that's coming down flushes all of this away and makes it go away. So more rocks or probably I could get a grid to go under there to fill the rocks with so that it, the rocks don't move. I maintain these. This is where the rentals are going to go. And I have to pick up all of these sticks after the storm because you can't have the mower in here and go over stuff like that. So that's where all of these piles of wood were created. And then these are the piles I pick from to supply the Airbnb guests and the RV guests with free firewood. So I'll take most of that big stuff, cut it up for them, 
I'll even give them the small stuff. This is my camp spot, my tent camp spot, and I've had two tent campers stay back here, another one stayed over there, and then another one stayed in the parking lot over there because she had her car, but they did enjoy the fire pit, which was nice. Chickens, I did get 10 new chicks. They are finally inside of there, and they are about 10 weeks, and I'm gonna be letting them out in a few weeks. Uh, we want to get them to the same size as these girls so that we let them out these girls don't peck them and bully them and they can basically stick up for themselves better than if they were little babies so i'm gonna actually go in there and show you them inside their sick pen hi girls look at those pretty girls hi zoe gracie girl laura lee hi echo now i did have to put these two sticks here i had taken most of the sticks that i had holding this tarp up i take, took them out of here and that was my mistake because i had to go find something else to push the water that was coming up it was making bubbles right there so now it all drains off of there i've even made this little crisscross so that the tarp falls that way because it would sink let's go meet the chicks we are utilizing these ice packs and once they get dirty or warm, I go into the house and replace them. I did have ventilation put in the coop. The handyman came over and put a fan in a 20 inch window. And quite honestly, it is 20 degrees cooler in here than it was before. Even though it is 86, 87 outside, it used to be hotter in here. These are our new chick. There's 10 of them in there. And this sick pen is actually becoming, it's, it's really handy being here. Josie is broody. When these chicks come out, I'm gonna be putting Josie in here to break her of her broodiness because we've done this before. Let's go visit Josie for a moment and then we'll get back to the chicks. Josie. Hazel has been, I don't know what's wrong, but she's not laying her eggs lately, and I catch her in the box all the time, which is a really good thing because at least she's trying to lay an egg. Half of them come out without a shell, half of them come out broken with the shell, some of them are stuck inside her, so I've always thought she was egg bound, but... Hi, sweet girl! Don't! But Hazel has been trying to lay eggs, which is really nice because... I thought that she had an infection. I thought that she had lash egg. I thought that there was things wrong with her and something might not be wrong with her. She's trying and she seems fine. Sometimes she doesn't though. And I actually don't know if one of those eggs are hers. Oh, Josie, stop it. Good girl. Good girl. We're back over by the chicks. Um, I keep their food up here little messy here as the food drops down. I have not really gotten into this area right here to get those chicks. They will barely let me touch them. They're just living their best lives in there. There's 10 of them and they do have room. So this is used as a sick pen, an introductory pen, and hopefully to get Josie not broody. The girls will taunt them, but they are growing up big and soon they're gonna be out with these girls. Unfortunately, the head hen Shelby died. She had water belly and I was able to save her for at least two months because I drained her belly, but then she passed away two months later. So rest in peace, Shelby. Hazel's now the head hen and so is Darcy. Good girl, Hazel. All right, there's the other ventilation. So it is actually, it's really nice in here. It's nice and cool. What's up, Darcy? Look at those sweet girls. Bye, girls. And this is my little 
set up from the inside. It's all covered and it's really easy to get out. I just latch this right here. It comes open. I do that right there and then I do this right here. The top is covered. I built that about two years ago. I have the run all the way around to the other side. They can pick bugs out of here. When it rains, that's when the bugs come up more, but they have this whole area to roam in. It goes all the way over here. And unfortunately, they pick all of these greens in one or two days and the entire thing is dead again. This was their previous one. As you could see, the greens are starting to grow back, but they did the same thing with that. And the year before, it was right here, so that's starting to grow back. I could keep moving it, but eventually I'm going to be putting a coop out here. I might be doing, this is all my scrap lumber that I got that I built all my gardens with. I might be putting wood chips in this whole section just to have an easier walkway. It's weedy but it's not grassy. It's very shady right here. It barely grows, so if I just cover it with wood chips, I think it would be a nicer area to walk in, uh, more organized, just less messy, less weedy. Thinking about putting the chicken coop in this whole section right here, I'm talking the entire thing, just so I could reclaim my lean-to, and so that the chickens are more protected because this isn't a typical chicken coop. It's basically the lean-to off side of the workshop. There's the ventilation from the outside. And they have free range to go in there. Hey, as we come over here to my gardens, I got a pile of compost dropped right here and this whole section was filled and now there's literally only that much left, which is gonna go in that bitty garden right there. This is my new garden section. I did put wood chips on the outside of the fence. I put up a fence and it is much different than what I had last year, which I'll go take you there now. This fencing is also different in the fact that it is not the bird netting. The bird netting is very flimsy. Here it's just, it's very flimsy. An animal can definitely get over it and looks like they've kind of have been in there. This is sturdier. I've seen squirrels go through these holes, so that's not cool, but what can you do? I am going to be creating a door right here, a double door that ties in the middle so I can open it both ways. This door is still here, so I can go in either one. I put wood chips up to it. And then as we come around here, I did build this sunflower garden. Unfortunately, the squirrels or something have dug up most of the plants that I was growing. I had 22 sunflowers and now I only see like three or four. There's some weeds in the middle. I did grow some other wildflowers in here, so this will just be like a sunflower wildflower garden on the side of the produce gardens. As I said before, I'm going to be making this into a door so I can get to it from over here. Here's a view of the garden from this side. It's huge. I did put wood chips all right here just to weed less, um, mow less, weed eat less, and I'm going to be making a little sitting area right here. It'll be just a cute garden sitting area. I do plan on putting more wood chips here. I'm going to have to put these up against there because as I weed eat, it leaves this whole thing open so animals can get in there. That's why the bird netting is just so, it's just not good. There's a, all of this garden area. All of this is also going to be wood chips. More weeds in the paths. And then we've got the tiny house. I do have this out here for if the guests want to grill. I have a little grill in the corner there. I have it bungee roped to the deck because of high winds. I created this little garden there which was not there before and bordered it with stuff used around the homestead. Usually in high winds I'll put all of these tables and chairs against the fire pit so that none of it blows. More tarp showing through the path. And it, this, this again is on a slope uh, and it just, it doesn't help that 
I only put two inches of rocks. I should have put it thicker, but I didn't have the money at the time. This is the front wildflower garden section. My friend and I did put wild, uh, wood chips in the path, uh, two of them so far, and it's looking really good. This is what the back gardens are gonna look like too. I'm also gonna be putting the wood chips all the way around. This is my RV section and I've just been maintenancing it and we've had about 34 guests. My best spot is right there, but it's just a really cute area for people to camp out in their rigs. It's a little bit of maintenance to, to do in here, mowing around it and weed eating. This year I am not going to be putting morning glory seeds or flowers or plants out along the fence. I do have to take all of this down from last year because that's all dead stuff. And I actually don't think that any of it's growing. I don't think any of it'll grow if I don't plant any there. My neighbor did make all of these license plate birdhouses. And this one is actually my old license plate. Oh, that is so cute. So he did that, put them all the way down on the fence. It's really cute. All of them made with license plates. So here's another part that I have not filled with rocks yet. The driver didn't come all the way back when he dropped the rocks. It's okay, we'll either cut the tarp or fill it in later. More sticks and branches that I have to pick up. Bring over to my little branch section. This is my best used spot, RV spot. It's about 55 feet, so their truck and their rig can fit. And they drive out through those trees that way. The person that parks in this spot right here can drive out that way, because I've got rocks all the way up there as well. This is the tree that I cut. Looks like it is still alive, but it is what it is. The top was dead, so I wanted it to come down. And I actually like how that looks. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it like that. I was going to make it into a little hobbit town, which I still probably will. That is adorable. It already looks like a little hobbit town. Now over here is the second batch of wood chips that was dropped. And as you can see, most of it has clearly been used. So the rest of that is going to go into the wildflower gardens over here. So that's why I did the produce gardens with the wood that's over there. And from storms, again, so that we're not mowing over this, we just pick them up and go take them over to all the other branches and sticks. And then when we need more on the piles, this is where we get it from. More problems with the tarp and with the weeds growing through. There's my parking lot. And there's nothing new with the tiny house rental. I have had about 155 guests total in just a little over a year. This is their backyard that when they rent, they can come to the backyard or they can sit in the front yard. Gardens are out right next to the tiny house. Did plant this herb garden as well using some of the sticks from the scrap lumber. These are all onions with some rosemary to ward off pests, catnip, basil, rosemary, peppermint, spearmint, chamomile. Those two I just planted and they don't look like they're doing well, but those that's dill. Cilantro looks like it's bolting. I believe that's thyme, parsley, two kinds, and my lemon balm. Chickens are out. What's up, girls? Look at those pretty girls. Zoe! Hi, Darcy. That's what the other fan looks like. I did put wood chips in this whole section right here. Just because this was a flood area, it still does flood right here. It floods into here. This whole thing floods. That's why all of this is washed into here. But it's easier to walk on. It's less muddy. Cute little spot right here. The guests need more firewood or if I'm back here and I have a fire, that's where I can get some firewood. I've got little houses around that I've put up. I did put wildflower seeds around all of these trees as well. Basically just making 
my homestead, my little homestead, and it's coming together. I mean, there's been a lot that has been done in the two years that I've been here. And lastly, I am making basically a porch planting thing. I have two more of those that I'm going to be making. Um, I'm obsessed with growing lemon, so all of these are lemon. There are 40 different plants. These are some zinnias. I do have some Greek olives that I'm trying to start right there. But all of these are going to be up potted into pots like this, and they're all going to be going on all of the stands. I've got some dragon fruit growing right there that I have to repot, a tomato that I have to plant, blueberry bush, kiwi, pomegranate, raspberry. This blueberry doesn't look like it's doing well, and this raspberry doesn't look like it's doing well. But this is going to be more plants on here. Do feed the hummingbirds. And we are done with the tour. I have gotten a lot done in the two years that I have been here and the updates from last year to this year are even bigger, especially where the gardens are concerned. And the chickens. I got 10 new chickens, so that's going to be an adventure in itself. But all of these gardens that I'm handling and all of the pathways that I'm trying to fill with, say, the wood chips, it's all going to make the community come together in nicer walkways, less work on me having to weed eat. This is a lot of acreage to take care of, so as I fill things in and build things up, it's just going to become easier for me in general. I hope you guys enjoyed these updates around the homestead, and if you did, please give this video a big thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, and click the notifications bell so you can receive a notification every time I post a new video, which is every Sunday. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. I will see you in the next video. My friends dropped off two huge loads of wild... Uh, don't put that. That was a squirrel. Squirrel.